So this week on this Insta Live uh, meeting, chatting, drinking, uh, enjoyings, um, I'm going to be joined by a dear friend of mine called Praveen, who's from a band called Peng Shui or Peng Shui, because um, I'm guessing like Feng Shui is what it's meant to be based on, um, and it's kind of like the Peng version, isn't it? But yeah, anyway, he's early. Yeah, let's don't wait, wait, this is popular. Hang on a second. There we go. Adding Praveen. Peng Shui. Hi, Rahul. How's it going? Thanks for joining us. Easy. And will this connect? Hello. Hello. How you, you like, going? You're like such a good boy with your side parting and all. Man, just actually, I feel like more of a sexy guy, to be fair. Really? Well, that's what I'm going for. You feel like more of a sexy guy. You're certainly not looking, bro. You look more good boy. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yo, cheers, bro. Mm. What you got in your glass, bro? That is a lovely pink pepper gin and tonic. Because you are in the countryside, of course, so it makes sense to adjust accordingly. It's, it, it's, it's a vibey little drink. Nice. Very yeah. nice. Nice Very to nice. see you. It's been a minute. You too. Hello, everybody. Logging in. Hi. Hi, Gesha. Yes. All the people. Warp Spaces, Rahul. Hi, Shreya. How's it going, everybody? Yes, Thank MC. You yes, that. Zaini. How are you Zaini's doing? Zaini's in the house. Yes. Excellent. Just... Welcome, everybody. So this is uh, the time of the week where I get drunk with a buddy um, over Instagram um, because of lockdowns and pandemics and so on. And you know what, bruv? This is week 32 of doing this. Respect, man. Number 32 in Week the house. 32. I've seen a few of these before. I've seen some good friends and some very inspirational people on here. So let me say, first off, it's an honor to be, honor to be a part of the squad. So, And that's shut up. Standard. You know what? This is the thing, right? So Praveen is an incredible drummer. You are a man who's played in many, 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 many bands, right? You've been in fucking... Uh, you started off playing in... all well, the bands that the public would know with the Foreign Beggars Life, right? Was the first sort of... Yep, used to do a lot of the foreign beggars live stuff for sure. Yeah, and then Shiren Funk from India. You're the you're the British. I played with Shiren Funk because I was playing a Glastonbury with foreign beggars. We were foreign I was beggars there. live band. I was at that gig. It was the first ever the foreign beggars live gig, right? And I was I was MD in the band, and then you turned up, came off stage. We had a really really good show, and you said to me, "These are my pals, Monica and Randolph. They're playing. You should play together." Really. That's why I ended up playing with Monica and Randall. It's because you bought them. You guys watched that show and you said, you've got to meet my buddies. And they're playing a few shows. They need a drummer. And that's how I started playing with them. So I owe it all to you, actually. I didn't fuck off. I didn't know that at all. I, I don't know me. many things that tend... I don't remember many things that happened at some Glastonbury's, right? To be fair. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah, yeah. Who remembers what the fuck happened? But I remember that 100%. You made that link. Oh, I'm honoured. That's really sweet. Ah. Wicked. Thanks for that tale. Shit, I never yeah. knew that at all. That's funny. Well, there anyway, you go. that's yeah. the truth. Yeah, well, there you go. Thank you for that. That's a very sweet memory. So, Sharon Funk and then Gentleman's Dub Club, right? Yeah. Well, I've played with them a lot. I actually currently manage them with my business partner, Matt, as well. So, yeah. I, I, I used to dep on drums and percussion for GDC a whole, whole time. I grew up with some of those guys. That's mad. Um, so, so I used to sit in on drums and I used to sit in on percussion and now I, I actually manage them. So shout out my dudes, GDC. They just had a new single come out. I'm not trying to plug things on here right now, but banging new single. And there you go. Actually, it's really funny. Shreya in the comments just said, I remember Bubba at Supersonic years ago. And that's really funny you mentioned that because Praveen, who this is right now, is yeah. Pavan, Pavan's brother. And they look really similar, but they're, they're not that similar yeah Pavan's the OG Pavan's the big man in the family so respect to my big brother and then there's you and Britam the twins which is bizarre because yeah. there's two of you looking like identical identical twins and then there's Nicky who's the, the the sensitive flamenco guitarist yeah he's 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 playing them them sexy chords yeah yeah, yeah. and that's it you know you, and the whole story about gentleman dubs gentleman's dub club going from being uh, you know, uh, manager, uh, like sort of tour manager, drummer, and then actually managing the whole outfit. That's kind of what happened with Foreign Beggars too, because you drum for them. And it's your brother's band as well. It was, you know, your brother was a founder member of it. And then a management company got set up to look after the Foreign Beggars, which was Peng Shui. Oh, no, fuck. Wait, wait, wait. I'm getting wrong. It's Par Excellence. I'm getting confused with the names right now. Um, and then Par Excellence ended up managing Foreign Beggars and everyone else. 
Well, yeah, I mean, Pirate Snows was set up as um, a label and kind of then became a management company. Pirate Snows was essentially the foreign beggars kind of created this umbrella. Um, and I'm just very fortunate because Pav, you know, like Pav, I never called him Pav, Pavan was there and Matt is managing him. And um, they said, look, do you guys want, do you want a job? I needed a job. And they said, look, will you come in, work for us? So I, I have foreign beggars to thank for the fact that I have the job I have today. I um, came in on the management team, at which point Matt had just taken on Alex Perez. Mm. So, and then it just kind of grew from there. So me and Matt, we used to manage, well, we managed beggars. Alex Perez, we won 1985 Music as well. Yeah, um, Alex's record label, right? So Yeah, yeah we, we run that label. We manage that label. We manage the Upbeats. We manage a dubstep kid called Oliver, who's a killer. He signed a disciple. Um, Gentleman's Dub Club. And I have my own band, Peng Shui. So Peng Shui is under the umbrella as well. So um, basically, my point was, was that, is, there any, is there any bands that you've sort of played in that you haven't gone on to manage? <laughs> <laughs> Sharon Fug. Sharon. Okay, fair enough, Sharon Fug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I used to do so much session work. So really and truly, I mean, you know, I've done some really cool sessions too so with some great artists here. But yeah, I guess our, our umbrella is, yeah, just all it's those just people. That, also, whole... also, not to forget Shades, Alex's other pro project with the EPROM, which we co-manage as well. Right, right, right. And, no, yeah. so, so going back to Peng Shui, right? Is it Peng Shui or Peng Shui, like Feng Shui? How do you, how the fuck do you say the name? However you want to say it. Ta, open my, open, open. I, like, we say Peng Shui, but if people say Peng Shui, great. I don't give a fuck, man. Just say the name. You know nice. what I mean? Just get involved. And so I'm break, not, like, not, who's in not the band then, right? There's, there's three, there's you on drums, then there's Fatty Bass Man on bass. Yeah. And then there's right. Illa Man on the mic. Yeah. Two very, very strong, incredible dudes. Um... Yeah, working with them is amazing. Just being a three-piece is really cool because it kind of shortens the decision-making process. Um, yeah. But also just as, you know, I think for anybody who plays in bands, playing in a trio is, for me, there's a reason why trios are called power trios because the lines of communications are very, communication are very direct. And the cool thing about Peng Shui is that we all just love the same thing and we want the same thing. And, um, yeah, but it's, I mean, it's kind of, I mean, uh, I, I might, I mean, I'll, I'll go back to how it formed, right? But it's basically punk and grime. And I've never seen this at a fucking gig, right? So you've got Fatty Bassman on bass doing like heavy fucking chords, but also you've got that kind of process sound. You've got you on drums fucking beating them like you've just discovered your penis and you're 18 or like, like 14 or something. You're just like, <laughs> that's what I waited to Yeah, about. yeah, 17. You're like, ah! <laughs> It's got to make right. Wheel up that. Yeah, oh, exactly. I'm not 18, so I'm giving a bit way too much about my life here, but 14, yeah, pull that shit, man. Um, yeah, I was going to say, bro, I mean, 18. I know. I'm a late starter, <laughs> bro. What can I say? But, um, but you know, like, going at the drums, like, fucking, but, like, hellfire. Um, and you've got, like, Illa Man, who can switch from, like, screaming vocals, like, full punk vocals. And he spits as well, because he's a proper MC. Do you know what I mean? So it goes from both, both things. So I've never seen punk and grime combined in that way before at all. And I haven't seen an audience react that way. We've got a mosh pit there and you've got a bunch of like grime kids around it. It's mad. It's like a complete fucking car crash of cultures. It's wicked. It's really, it, it is really cool. It's cool because I think there's so many influences from our lives, you know, growing up that came into making the sound. And we are all, first and foremost, we are all metalers. Right. Inner Man is one of the hardest MCs in this country and I think in the world. But Inner Man grew up playing in a metal band too. So that dude can shout. He can shout like Phil Anselmo. You know, so... Phil Anselmo is the vocalist in Pantera, just for yeah. everyone. Just, yeah, yeah. So that's why... That's why it all kind of worked out. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's fun. And we do get a real mixed crowd, like you say. Um, we even get lots of... We get girls at our shows, dude. Which is mad. You think the music's hard. It's definitely hard, but it's definitely fun. It's party music too. Yeah. We're not going to lose the funk, you know. Well, you know what? Do you think? Okay, so this is now you've mentioned the whole demographic of your show being like, you know, even split between male, female, between metalers and grime heads. It's kind of like a mad mix. Oh, I'm going to shout out Jam's in the house, Ganal's in the house. Oh, hello, kid. Jam. Jam yes. and Ganal, wicked. John oh. Arkell. John Arkell, the best drummer, one of the best drummers I've ever met in my life. He's in here. He depped for me on some Peng Shui shows when I had to pull out when the whole Corona thing kicked off. 
Is that a mucky thing? Like we just leave your bands? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I I had to do it. I had to do it for you know for for kind of private family reasons. Okay. While we were on tour and Corona was really starting to peak, so I was just like, look, um, because people close to me are more vulnerable. So I was like, look, I, I can't. Yeah, yeah. Carry on. So John stepped in, did a couple of shows, and invariably, the, the, you know, hey Yazzie, um, hey, so yes, in, invariably the t the tour came to a halt. But it, it just got to the point where it was just like, you know, playing metal gigs in small venues and where it's rowdy. And our, our, our whole intention yeah. is to, you know, make sure that the carpet comes off the floor, and with the sub bass that the light bulbs rattle and they break. Yeah, you know. All with love, but it just means that people are getting sweaty, they're getting together, and we just felt like, look, we can't be a force for bad, we can't make this problem worse, and that's obviously yeah. why we pulled it. Actually, earlier, we filled in a lot of other bands, and not not say that we were better or not, it's just that a couple of us are living cl close quarters with family. That, you, yeah, um, you gotta just be more ca more cautious, man. So, yeah, yeah, man, like the gigs are gonna come back, we just can't, we can't, we can't mess around, you know, with something so dangerous something we don't know cheers cheers so Arkell was the best drummer who stood in for you when you couldn't do certain things oh Jesus Christ John Arkell is one of the best drummers I've ever met in my life yeah, um, Simon's I mean, here. actually Look I could take a moment for John Arkell John Arkell has played with a lot of people John Arkell was I think wasn't John Arkell John you played drums in True Tiger right so well, I was in Soot Knight and, uh, and uh, yeah. Stanzo and those guys I'm pretty sure that was John John and then he's played lots of pop acts John, well, that, John, that makes fucking sense considering most of your money is actually at 140. Uh, money? Sorry, I just heard uh, most of your tunes are at 140. <laughs> that's a proper, that's a proper good G vibes right there. Where do you get your Shut money? Shut up, you Cindy. Money that was money. The thing, right? Okay, so actually, that's one of the things, right? Working with your brother, right? With Pratt, it's just like, yeah, what, do, what happens when you get Guju and Cindy together? That's it. Just full on fucking money chat. Yo, man. You gotta, you, you know, you gotta play music. You still gotta do business. <laughs> no. So I mean, that's, I mean that's it, right? So Peng Shui, right? Like I kicked off the gig at the Old Blue Last in Shoreditch up the road was just fucking brilliant. Like it was amazing show. And then obviously, you know, it was building up. You were gearing up for a, a UK tour, and then Corona came and just went Prah! and just fucking shut you down. Well, yeah. Okay. So there are two separate stories there. When right. we when you saw us play at the Old Blue Last, mm. funny enough, Kerrang. So I want to shout out Kerrang magazine. I want to shout out Alex Baker. Especially. Okay. Well, Kerrang is a big metal magazine in the UK. I'm not sure if they're... Yeah, it's, it's pretty American. big here. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's definitely UK-centric. I think, you know... It was like, like the, the two magazines that I read growing up in the metal scene was Metal Hammer and Kerrang. Same here. Yeah. Right, with the same age, and that's what we had. And then sometimes Terrorizer, which was more extreme. But, but Alex Baker put a song, because he used to throw these things called Fresh Blood shows, and Pentry was relatively new at that point. So we did the old blue last because he threw another fresh blood show, but fresh blood show. We didn't realize that. Fresh blow <laughs> show, yeah. Okay. Fresh blow. <laughs> yeah, fresh blow. Fresh. Um, no, it was a mad show because I think, and at the same time, we were entered into a competition by our, our old manager, Selena, who we love. I love you, Selena. Um, to enter into download to opening the Avalanche stage, which is a 3,000 cap stage. It's It's... There's four stages of download. That's the third stage, but it's still 3,000. But that's only inside the tent. You know what I mean? Right. So it's a big stage. And then there's like um, fucking thousands of people standing outside the tent as well. So we and then we got nominated. We played that show. And the next thing we got a call from the owner of Download saying, by the way, you're playing Download Festival. And then we ended up playing Download. We opened, you know, when we were sound checking, there was no one in the tent. When we came out, there was 3,000 people there. Fucking hell. Yeah, so they came to see us. They came to see us on purpose, you know, and... Like with an intent to see, it wasn't someone yeah. walking past. Yeah, and then what was the other story? So then, then, but that was way before Corona. I think that was, um, so that was probably what last year, summer June two thousand nineteen. We did that, and then Corona happened in March. So when we were touring our first album, but yeah. I think um, a lot of people know we've been busy in the studio. Yeah, and. Uh, and we have a lot to say about the next bunch of work we've been doing, actually. So we do, but I mean, that's the thing is that you you had a tour planned up for your debut album, and it never fucking happened because. Well, we got a few dates in, um, yeah, and there was a few bloody noses, a few mosh bits, so there. Mm. We got something in, you know. Do you know what? That's that's it, man. Basically, fucking like Peng Shui is is essentially blood spattered, uh, sorry, blood stained Moschino. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I think you're, you're thinking about garage music. Well, I mean, still, you get that, you know, some, some, you know, a bit. That, come on, all those oh. styles are coming back. You'd wear a machino jacket now. You blatantly would. In fact, fuck you, I've seen you wear a machino jacket. Yeah, yeah, I'm down. I'm a so shut up. Down, I mean, that's it. And they're covered in blood. Kind of makes sense. That's kind of cool. That's actually a good idea. I, okay, so I know the story, but I want you to tell people the story about how you, how the band happened. How did the band happen? Actually, it was the band a fucking WhatsApp because... group, wasn't it? Well, it's it's a little bit more than that. So okay. fatty, so fatty, is like top dot. So this came from fatty. Fatty had a bunch of ideas for many years ago, and he, you know, he plays for Self Motion Orchestra. He plays with Jay Gray. He's played on Georgia Smith Records. He um, plays with Mahalia. He plays. I mean, fatty's list of. You know, his like all on bass because he's fatty bass back. So it's like, yeah, the I mean, people yeah. call him because they literally want him to just be him and do his thing. And yeah. he's, he's a fascinating, incredible human being, and my brother, and I love him. And um, he had this idea, and I know he called Dave because he's like, I need to do this fucking hard shit. I want because he grew up playing in heavy ass bands, like really, really heavy stuff. Um, and then, like, after years, you know, we were all at Outlook and we were chatting. He said, like, I need to do this heavy stuff. And uh, we well, actually were chatting to Dom Howard, who used to be in Submotion Orchestra, was there, produces a lot of their music and used to be their front of house. And he was like, right. I need someone heavy. I need an MC who's, who's gnarly, who can shout as well. So he was like, straight yeah. away, he's like, get in touch with Dave. He hit up Dave. Yeah. Dave was straight away. Dave AKA like, Illaman. Yeah. Yeah. AKA Illaman. And so Dave was in. Mm-hmm. And then they kind of were like, cool. Dave was like, we need a drummer. So he spoke. And they spoke about me. And luckily at that point, I'd been doing a few gigs with Fatty because we were playing with our friend Lily. Right. So, so I, they gave me the call. They were like, do you want to do this? I was like, definitely. Because by that point, I was actually drumming a lot less. I was doing so much more of the management stuff and I missed playing drums. And I also... Easy to put them. Here's in the house. Yeah, and Naveen's here. Oh, wicked. But, yeah. Fritz in the house. Yes, Naveen. What's going nice. on, bro? All the bros. And yeah, so... They gave me they gave me a call and I was like, I'm fucking in, bro. And we went in and straight away, first jam, we're like, look, let's see where this goes. Yeah. Completely, you know, just free, open. He just bought his bass amp, and I bought my drums. Dave got on the mic, and we just actually just started writing in it. All the some of the first well, in session, out. nothing, just fucking just going for it. That was it. Just, yeah. just and, and some of that just came out. Some one or two of our tunes from our first EP came from that jam. Mm. Just cause. But then obviously the other tunes came about in a very different way. Which then means, so now I need to tell you who's involved. So Pete Cannon. Right. You know, Pete Cannon, ultimate junglist, best hair in the game. Um, Pete Cannon and Fatty grew up together. So they had a bunch of these tunes. There were sketches. We're like, cool, let's take them, their ideas. And they kind of made them into tunes. They brought them to me. We recorded drums, made it hard. Fatty, we put down his bass, made them hard. We structured tunes. Yeah. Dave shelled the fuck out of it. And then suddenly, Pentry was a thing. We put out our first tune in June 2018. And uh, Illaman's here. He's Dave. Yes, Dave. What's happening? What happened, brother? So, and then from then to now, the trajectory was, was crazy. Within three months of releasing our first tune, we got a call from the Prodigy's manager. Yeah. We did a fucking Prodigy remix. I was going to get to that. That's fucking nuts. Light of the Sky, right? That was from uh, the, the so, last album. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So... And, then, holy shit, that was the last, that was the gig at fucking, um, I mean, it seemed like all of our crew was at this gig in fucking Alexander Palace. Like, obviously, before Keith passed R.I.P., the November before, is yeah. when you guys just did the remix, Prush mastered the album, fucking, there was, other, and Vinny opened for them in Birmingham, big up Vinny. Like, it yeah. was like the whole fucking fam somehow got involved with the Prodigy. Like, oh, the Beanie, time. what's happening, Beanie? Yeah, all the fucking Chinese, all the Indian news, yeah, Asian takeover. Yo, is it a prodigy show? No, no, Trust was, me, Asians are coming, bro. It was like the, <laughs> that's the, basically the, what happened. They got renamed the Brogody. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many brown people back then. But, like, the but real, real, real so talk, wicked. real talk, real talk, real, real yeah. talk. Talking about prodigy remix, like that mm. was a crazy one because we know Nick. Nick's a friend. We've known Nick for Nick a long Hawks. time. Big up Nick Hawks. Big up the Nick Hawks. Discover so, the prodigy. Well, sort of A and R the prodigy. So yeah, respect Nick Hawks. But he's he's very instrumental. And yeah, like. so Nick called me. I was like, "Yo," because we called. Actually, the reason I think it, the reason it happened because we we were obviously probably badgering Nick for a bit. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, let's be honest. Nick gets badgered by everyone constantly. 
Yeah, yeah, we're hundred percent badgered, Nick. Anyway, for our yeah. first gig, it was literally a little tiny showcase in a room with twenty people, and we're like, "Look, here we go." Was that in Hoxton, we're... the very first show? That no, time? it wasn't. It was in a place called the Rattle. This crazy, crazy, incredible incubator for musicians and people in in the tech world. Yeah. Um, and so they really helped us. They helped us to record. So it's like Bobby and John and Orton and Chris, all the dudes. Like, so they um. They have a small, like, well, it's a live room, so it's a kind of a big rehearsal room, mm -hmm. but it's all tech. And um, we got Bailey in the house. We, yes. we did, we did this showcase show, and mm -hmm. we're like, Nick, come down. And actually, our friend Chris Sarson, thank you, Chris worked a lot with Nick. Said, just come and fucking listen to this. And so mm -hmm. that was in June. We put out our first single, and then by September, Nick called us and he was like, I want you to remix Prodigy. Well, he's like, I'm giving you a shot. Actually, is what he said. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And we're like, oh, fuck, all right, cool. He's like, how long have we got? He's like, now. <laughs> <laughs> so we did three iterations of this, this tune in a week because yeah. we had to keep going back between oh, us and Liam. Yeah. And then uh, we signed off. In a Sick. week, we've done. It was like, cool, thanks, done. Psh. So like, Sick. all right. And then they just kind of called us and told us when it was coming out. Awesome. Yeah, pretty serious, serious dudes, serious dudes Sick. to deal with. And so that, Sick. yeah, that, that doing that on a business level, like just on a real, that, that gave us credit. I mean, I feel like we had a lot of credibility from the beginning because we've all worked in music for so long. And yeah, and everyone, everyone backed us, you, you know, Pub on backed us, you backed yeah. us, Rag and Bone Man backed us. In fact, Jamie, JME was retweeting stuff about us. So between that and then finally, like the deal, being said, prodigy, like, remix. prodigy remix coming in, everybody stood up. They were like, Well, what the fuck? you know. So, hey, big up Tej from Bombay, big up Joel, yes, yeah, Tej, nice. yes, Tej. Actually, speaking of which, I saw a comment fly up past earlier about your NH7 performance. Oh, yeah, yeah, saying it was fucking brilliant, man. That was that was a, a dream come true. I want, I want to, yo. Hold tight, Ashish, man. Thank you yeah, for putting us on. Not only thank you for putting us on, for me to come home warms my heart, but to be given such an amazing set time. Um, so it's like you and Fever 333, right? Well, no, it was us and then Opeth. Okay. So Ashish really gave us a leg up, and that was right. a really cool thing, and I just want to say that publicly, and I, res I respect it, and I appreciate it. In fact, can we take a second to talk about all the incredible dudes in India? Oh, yeah, of course. There's, I mean, there, there's loads of them. And, and ladies, to be fair. Like, everybody. I mean, I mean, dudes, I mean, dudes, ladies, I mean, everybody, I mean people. people. I yeah, mean, man. people. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. people. So. I mean, God. if we're going to do that, we're going to get emotional and, and talk about missing Bombay and all that kind of shit. Yeah, God, I miss Bombay, man. <laughs> I miss Bombay. Dude, I was going through this, right? I was, I was going through this. I was thinking about, like, all of our fucking history and all the shit, all the mad shit we've done together, right? So, like, the supersonic stuff and whatever. And there's this one thing which I think we can talk about, right? Which is where we programmed, we programmed supersonic <laughs> and we, we brought over, like, you know, me, you, me um, Ali, Pav, uh, uh, and Trush programmed supersonic. And then all of our fam came. You were out there. Gunal was there. D was there, like... It was like mega fan. Everyone was pulling in their crews to make this thing happen. And it was like this fucking mad combination of every bass heavy person you could imagine. So like Goldie, fucking Stanton Warriors. Alex um, TV, Die. Alex TV, Die. Jenna G. G. Fucking, it was just Alex, Alex Kimbo. Like, the Upbeats. It was, and the Upbeats. Like, it was just ridiculous, like, thing in Goa. And, and I think I <laughs> fucked up one day because I, I think I was doing the, the festival thing, press, and then the after party. Fatty, and that was fatty DJ. Yes, Fatty. Easy, Fatty. And yeah, so doing all of that shit, it was, it was really intense. Were you there, Illiman? Dave. Was you there? No, that Dave, no, Dave was there the, not the first year, the second year. Second year, right. So the first year was insane. It was fucking insane. And the after party, my God, the after party when like Alex, Goldie, Di, um, and... Uh, who was the big house person that was there? The massive, massive house DJ. Oh, gosh, I remember. How, how can I forget now? But I remember I forget. I'm Basically, I've forgotten. Yeah. It's on the tip of my tongue. It's not... Was it a Detroit dude? It was. 
But anyway, they all went back to back to back to back to back. With D Bridge. Yeah. D Bridge as well. I mean, it was just insane. Although Chimpo. we didn't program D Bridge, he was playing Chimpo. Tom Bird. Chimpo, Chimpo was it. on the mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chimpo did some dangerous things. Oh that whole, I mean, everyone did some dangerous things. But that, what I, what I was going to get at was that, that whole magic. I mean, musically, not in a crazy way. I meant musically. Yeah. No, Naveen, it wasn't Eric Price. It was someone massive and respected from the Detroit scene that jumped on the set, on the back-to-back -back with Alex D. Bridge, Goldie, Die, and there was this one house guy that played with them, and it was like a legendary thing. Anyway, whatever. There was that whole thing. Oh, yeah, Illaman, yeah, with, on the mic with Pokes and Marla. That was year two. Or year three, maybe. Anyway, yes. but the point I was getting at was that I fucked up and I missed doing all the interviews with everyone. So I got D in, like D code, and I was like, D, can you just fucking handle a bunch of this shit? And then me, you, and Randolph decided, I decided to interview you and Randolph after like three days. And we jumped in a car in Goa and went to some derelict building site. It was this reconstructed temple. I remember. And you had an inflatable dinghy around your waist. And and Juppels, and we were just like, okay, we're gonna have to fucking do this. And then you walked across the building site <laughs> and this nail just went through your foot, like all the way through your foot. I remember. And then, and then, you, then you lifted up your leg and there was a plank of wood stuck to your fucking foot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I just, I just, just all the madnesses just fucking I had to get a tetanus, back. I had to get another tetanus shot because of that. Oh God. <laughs> It was good. I think it was it was a great year. You know, it was yeah. amazing because everybody that came was really happy and everyone really appreciated it, both the, the artists and the crowd. Yeah, man. It was something special. It was fucking great. And that's the thing is that like like that, is that when you come up with an idea like Peng Shui, because you've done stuff like that, like having a fucking like plank stuck to your foot and there's a lot of respect about it, it's like, yeah, we're going to jump in with Prav, you know. And also, there's one thing about you that's really annoying is that you managed to stay humble through all this shit. Uh, what can I say, dude? You're so fucking, like, so good boy. Your fucking haircut just actually sums you up, like, properly. It's Bro, like, I love, no, I, I've done the long hair, long beard thing, the long beard and was out here and was... Oh, just, I think I was just like, I, got, I was done with it. But the full, the full good boy thing came through, man. Good As, boy. And, no, I want to look like a good boy because I need a visa, innit? But I'm still a sexy, dirty guy at heart. Yeah. <laughs> Why so, yeah. looking for a visa, bro? I just, I just tidy up for the, for the fucking passport photo. Yeah, for the passport picture. Passport and photo. then everything else will come back. Then, like, the holiday oh. games and shit will come back. He's from a good family. Okay. Oh, my twin says, I just want to look like him. And no. then directly, then your brother No, no, goes. no. Check this out. Prit says, I look like him. And it's like, I want to look like him. It's like, no. I don't want to look like I work in HR. Bing! Oh, there, Basket. And then Bobbins just popped up as well. This is Basket, beautiful. Basket, yo. Full fam jams. Full fam. Full fam. So, yeah, right. We got actually talked to all this stuff. The band came up, all this kind of stuff. Second album. Very how proud. Much you want to let, how much do you want to let off about the show? Uh, how much do you want to let off? Well, about? I mean, like, there's certain things we've already let off. So, <clears throat> so if you look at music, so you have, like, your Rick Rubens, right? So Flux Pavilion has produced our second album. Flux Pavilion has been our Rick Rubin. <laughs> Sorry, Imran Khan, like there's in the journalist Imran Khan popped up and he's like, is this goodness gracious me, the D&B edition? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, pretty much, bro. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, so, so Flux so, Pavilion, so so Flux Pavilion like, has been our Rick Rubin and it's been an amazing thing. Um, so yeah. is it because okay, so Flux's music is really specific at that 140 thing? You know what I mean? And he obviously kind of actually UK... Flux is Flux has done a lot of pop and he's worked with a lot of people, so he produces other people's stuff you probably won't know about. Right. Flux is a really well-rounded producer and a very right. good musician, and he has reason, incredible ears. I mean, the reason why I say that is because the 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 the, the track that Flux Pavilion is known for in the UK was like the peak dubstep crossover to bro step kind of thing. And then in America, there's much more diverse success outside of that scene, which is why I kind of wanted you to explain that. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Because that happened on a certain timeline because yeah, the sound yeah. changed. And when it went, it kind of left the UK and it just bedded itself in, 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 in the US. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. Then so the, and that's why I kind of was getting at. So the, what other production stuff has he done that makes it more Rick Rubin and less Brostep? 
well, as in he was, he was very much part of like, so where, where I live in the countryside, we have a little space we can play. Um, and he came down, he said, well, it's a few days. So we, we had these sketches, took the sketches to him, spoke about them. Um, I, the process kind of, oh my God, the earlier part of the process is like, I'm forgetting it. Anyway, we took these songs, we made ideas out of these songs, these riffs and these electric, like ideas, electronic kind of sketched out produced ideas that either he or Pete Cannon made very much in the same way we did our first album but we took them away and said all right let's riff let's play these things and let's see what comes next what mm -hmm. sections can we write as a band in a very bandy way and we did a lot of that we'd come up with a lot of ideas show them to him and he'd be like this idea is great more of that fuck this this is bullshit chuck mm -hmm. it and you know then kind of Dave came in so we started playing kind of together. So he, he kind of helped us to shape the songs as well. So he was looking at this going like, this is a good idea, develop this. Even looking at riffs or, you know, and then he even brought a couple of his tunes to the table, which we took. We took a couple of his tunes and then made them our own because it's like, okay, here's a sketch for something I thought was good. Mm. So we took that and then we made that Peng Shui, mm. you know? So he, he yeah, it was pretty instrumental in just kind of making us well, he was just, he was really good at saying, look, make it better, do something else. <laughs> you know, and, and, and which is essentially what you need because it's because we're like, cool, we'd show him something. And if he just started going, yeah, or if he started smiling, it was just like, all right, we're doing the right thing. Yeah, yeah. So it's a taste filter. And you know what? That's the thing is that sometimes you can't see the wood for the trees because you're so fucking close to the project, right? Objectivity. So you need, yeah, exactly. So you need that little outside ears on it, essentially. Toby Davis says he's had a glimpse of the record. It's absolutely nutty. I have too. And it's awesome. I'm 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 fucking I'm really proud of it. Uh, yeah. We we are all really proud of it because, you know what, we've really just done the best we can actually do. We've done our mm. best, you know, and now it's really great because, the last record was kind of written in a top down kind of way. Here's the idea. Let's write down. Let's fit into it. And it wasn't very organic and bandy, but this time we've writ we've written the record as a band. Yeah. You know, in a large way. So Yeah. Yeah, man, Dej is saying when's the album out? Not gonna tell you just yet. Uh PBD. That famous that that sort of that that old famous. Yeah, but day. I mean it's just like when are we gonna put it out? Who knows? Like and doesn't matter. You know what, someone just says, out. When can I get my hands on it? I think that every time I see Prav on the screen on that one. Can I get my hands on that <laughs> meaty beard? But yeah, sorry, God, I just cut you off. Mid no, no, it's all good, man. Yeah, I mean, Papa yeah. So you, you don't know when it's coming out. You you want to fucking like get towards. Well, it's not about you know what. It's it's funny. We'll tell you when we want to put it out. We'll tell you when it's coming out. Um, people will hear bits at certain times or at certain points. Anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Buffin just said that's my that's our mum who said that. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. It's all right. I'm sorry, Auntie. <laughs> Shit. It's all right, Auntie's Rago anyway. That's so funny. I just sort of yeah, just told your mum that I want to grab your face. Anyway. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> so bad. So bad. So anyway, apart from next album things, any other fucking shit hot remixes or anything else on the horizon pre album? Like or post album? Anything else? Well, actually, we got, you know what? Funny enough, Nick Hawks. Let's talk about Nick Hawks again. He, because he hit me up, because we're putting out all these remixes for Peng Shui till the end of the year. And um, I think I'm definitely ah, saying. Big up if Khan's in the house, wicked. Big up if. Yes, if. Yeah, well done. So um, Nick hit me up. He's like, Prab, do you want another remix? God, this guy is really dope. Okay. And this is fucking lashing techno. A guy called Break Code. Okay. So we put out what we got a Conrad remix, a Mode Step remix, we got Monty remix, we got N Type fucking remix. Um, really? Yeah, N Type remix. No joke, it came out early. Yo, that N Type remix is. Wait, so Break Code is the artist name? The guy called Break Code, but two, all one word, but the C is capital C if you want to look for it on. Oh, got it. Got it, got it, got it. But it hasn't, that remix, our remix, his remix of our tune hasn't come out yet. It's just that it's fucking lashing techno. Go mm -hmm. listen to his tunes. Listen to a tune called Hornet. Listen to some other bits. Sick. You know, actually, for all the India squad, yo, if you want that hard techno shit, he's, he's your guy, you know. 
That's so uh, funny. I just real I keep forgetting that Imran Khan and Niv Khan are fucking brothers. So bizarre. I keep forgetting that. Yeah, Imran and Irfan. Yeah. Yeah, makes sense, right? Like, it's like Pavan, 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 Pritam. And then, and then, and then, Nikki. It's like, what the fuck? Like, does he feel left out with a name like that? They should have just called him like Prina. Dude, actually saying that, you're the only person in a band that doesn't have man in your name. It's like, huh? Fatty bass man, illa man, and then Praveen. Praveen? Praveen. No, Praveen. Yeah, yeah, Pavan, they're actually brothers, yeah. Yeah, well, Fatty's not Fatty bass man. I think that's just, just like his, um, whatever. It's his Monica. Monica. That's a good point, actually. So your whole thing, right, you going in Dubai, you know, you, I know your family's mad musical. You've been throwing gigs from fucking day. Yeah. I've seen, you know, a picture of all four of you brothers in a band looking at the Beatles when you're fucking, like, knee high. You know, I've seen all this kind of shit with your family. Very musical, very outgoing. And obviously, Bovin's <laughs> alter ego and his, his, his other musical projects are incredibly well. Incredible. Incredibly well. And then there's you, but... As an artist, you've never found a name. Like, trying to put Prav on a flyer is... Well, actually, just... no, no. It's not Prav. I'm always, actually, I, I got given my name, Pravi Prav, by yeah. an artist friend of mine. And at, much against my will, actually, um, I was doing a gig with, actually, rest in peace, I was doing a gig with Ebo. Big Ebo up Ebo, was, big love. Yeah. Ebo was doing a solo set at, at this club called Cargo, which you know. Yes. And this must have been in 2006, 2007. And he was like, look, I'm doing a solo set. Will you just come and DJ? Because you know, he's a DJ. He's like, look, I just need to play some tunes for you. Then I got there and cargo was packed, right? So it was great. And then Jest was there too. And Jest was like, yo, my DJ's flopped me. Prav. So another rapper, basically. So without yeah. a DJ. Yeah. Jest, fucking Don. And uh, he said, like, what am I going to call you? I was like, yo, what the fuck, man? Just, I was really stressed out that day also, like, really stressed out. I was like, look, I'm coming to play I'm this. Just, I just want to say that at every gig I've seen you at, stressed out is your default setting. You should see the people are doing, bruv. Um, anyway, um, <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, yeah, no, I get, I, I get myself a bit too tense, like, but mostly cool. Anyway, Jess is like, cool, because Jess was headlining and he's like, I want you to play for me. So he gave me the tunes, and he's like, what am I going to call you? I was like, just call me Praveen, bro. Just stop fucking with me, you know? He's like, no, nah, that's bullshit. <laughs> and I was like, whatever. So I went away. And then he called me. He's like, we're going on stage. I get on stage, set the first tune, and goes, yo, we got DJ Pravi Prav. <laughs> and that's how the name came about. There you go. So that is your artist name. That is my artist name. So I should have put Pravi Prav from Peng Shui. Man, I'm Prav. I'm often Pav. Sometimes I'm pre -thumb. You can write whatever the fuck you want, bro. Bro, 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 bro. Actually, another another recollection happened. So me, uh, so as Shiva Sound System, me and Dee put out this album years ago, 2007, 2008. And we did a track with Pav, right? And I think, were you there in that session where you'd gone to see Metallica or something? Where we had a studio in, like, over the road from Buckingham Palace for some fucking reason, at our friend's house. And we were in the basement of some place. And we were recording sessions that night. And Bovin turned up after seeing Metallica or whatever. And we thought this beat was going to be like a hip hop thing, but he came out with a death metal vocal. You did the backing vocals to it. You did all the sort of deep throat. Yeah, sort yeah, of I, did, I, did, I did all the growls on that vocal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you were there for that session, right? Yeah, I've got my fucking PPL breath, but where? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. It was just like this weird track that was like Shiva Sound System, but uh, and and meets kind of elements of foreign beggars. But it was like a death metal thing. It was like but it was like kind of a go. prodigy tempo. I remember Papa called me and he was just like, "I need some screams. I need him to be harsh." So he called me and he was like, mm. "Go, send me in the booth." Yeah. So we did that, and it was like that must have been actually 2006, I reckon, 2007, and mm. um, and then it came to doing the video for it, which was definitely 2008 because we were on Radio One at that point. So we were like, we we pulled in enough pay, like favors and got lots of cameos and stuff in it and Bovin couldn't do it right so Pav was not in town he couldn't do it so you had to play Pav's role in the video yes I remember <laughs> we're like you look like it. dude your whole fucking family is in the chats you know that it's really Nikki's here big up Nikki the yeah. badass guitarist easy Nikki oh Dave's saying yeah Dave I had to start I did some kind of screams and stuff for the new album so Oh, shit. Yeah. Really? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got a surprisingly deep voice. And also, talking about someone that moonlights with their voice from management to sort of behind the mic, that voice server you did, yeah, Pavan's right, directed by Shaft, yeah, man, who's now a, a tantric guru, which is just amazing. Big up Shaft. All tight Shaft. Big up Shaft. I mean, Shaft is a good name for a tantric guru, man. That is if very ever there true. was a name, it's got to be dude <laughs> Shaft. But, uh, Fuck, what was I? I was, I was actually on a fucking roll then. There was something I was talking about. Shit, I was going to talk about something. Fuck. No, I know what you're talking about. Hold on. Go on, remind me. What was I talking about? Video. Oh, God, I've lost, I've lost the thread. Oh, man. Pab just fucking derailed me with that comment because I'm just like, yo, that was too funny. Screaming. Shit. Screaming. I'm oh. Uh... oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I know exactly what I was going to say. So He's considering, a fucking script. Considering, considering you manage, like, the upbeats, and that fucking big tune that them and Noisier did. Dead Limit. The big tune, the fucking like Dead Limit that, that is like a smasher of a fucking d &B tune out there. Dude, it changed. It's, it's, it's like it's in the history book to me that, you know, that tune. Yeah, but, that but, tune. But, 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 but the teaser trailer that Wolves India did. I mean, how incestuous is this? You're managing Upbeats. We're looking after fucking uh, Wolves uh, visuals in Bombay internationally. And they combined for the teaser trailer for Dead Limit. And then you jump on and do the fucking voiceover for it. Do you know the funny thing is, yeah, I did the voiceover. <laughs> but when that same year, that same year, that tune went so hard. Yeah, it um, was ridiculous. No, dude, it was mental because Noisier played the midnight set New Year that year at Brixton Academy. So Tice called me, was like, yo, I need a New Year's edit. So, <laughs> so I had to do a fucking dub play New Year edit. Brixton Academy. The first thing those people he heard at midnight was my fucking voice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do it now. Do it right fucking now. Oh, shit. I can't even remember. No, no. Fuck you. Do it now. Because this... Oh, I could just say something about you. Bro, yes, no, 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 no. Fuck that. Fuck that. Do, do, do the New Year's double. Because this New Year's Eve is going to be shit. No, I can't even people. remember. It's always like... It's, uh, I'm fucking... Oh, dude. I can't even remember. It's kind of there. Something about New Year. Some shit, whatever. Don't fucking do it. Come on, you're No, but I can't, I can't remember the words, bro. It's been a minute. Fuck you. I'll put it up on YouTube and play the original. In fact, that's quite a good idea. We should play the whole intro of Dead Limit just so you can get your, get your juices flowing. You can't play the whole intro of Dead Limit. Of course I fucking can. It's not. It's only 20 seconds. Is it? Hang on a second. It's, it's wait, No, it's 20 seconds till it goes to that thing. Oh, wait, I'm going to stop that. Quick. Okay, yeah, allow it. You know what? You know what? You know what I really like? Do you know what? You know, okay, no, no, wait, wait. The amount of schoolboy fucking humor in this. I'm just talking about willies and balls and shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's so funny. It's just so juvenile. There's so it's much about wicked. balls D, fucking rated R, penetration, parental advice, like advisory shit. Yeah. So go on. Bobbin's saying, do one about me and my, pop, my pepper army willy. Bobbin. No, about me. No, no, not oh, his willy. Nerm. My... <laughs> Nerm was just an ordinary guy until his dick became so small. Uh, fuck, what am I going to do this? He could go uh, anywhere. No. <laughs> Pepperami Nerm raided Haram. <laughs> <laughs> I would say stretch. Yes, Martin, that's stretch. What are you saying? That's fucking brilliant. Rated Haram. That's Rated fucking, Haram. Bro, you haven't coined perfect. it. We coined it. We coined it. Just now. That's perfect. Rated that Haram. perfect. Oh, my God. Oh, God. There's got to be something about, like, a Pepper Army Willie producing nerms. This is some serious chat, bro. It is some serious chat. Fucking hell. That's some, I mean, that's what happens when you have, like... I think that's, you know, at the core of it, it's, like, joy and stupidness. Well, it has to be, doesn't it? Especially, like, like, okay, on a serious note, joy and stupidness, like, when things are uh, so On fucking... a serious note about joy and stupidness. Yeah, yeah. no, literally, when things <laughs> yeah. are mad, when things are mad, 
Yeah. You got you got to laugh. You got to find a way to laugh, right? If you're not it's laughing, true. like right now, a lot of people are fucking struggling with many things. Like we all have our own struggles. <laughs> so yeah, you better fucking laugh. Or you're dead, bro. That is true. That is very yeah. fucking true. Where they turn it round. Okay, so here's the other thing. So who would you, as Peng Peng Shui, as a band? Oh, I'm fucking up. That was like a voiceover right there. You're right, man. Right, right. Okay, as a band, who would you want to remix as a target? Who would I like, want to remix? Again? Oh, so who would we want to remix? Yeah, man, because you've done the Prodigy, which is kind of like there. What the fuck are you gonna do next? I mean, in, in what? It, I, that's so funny because in what context? Because if you said to me, "Can I jack a chorus?" I put it down and we can do some of our 140 shit, do some verses mm. and then just jack a chorus and put it on because that chorus is so sick in that very simplistic remix kind of way. Well, I was thinking, I mean, that's just a bootleg. You could do that anyway. In fact, you do that live. You've done that loads. Do oh, yeah, we do. We bootleg and, and we pay tribute to various people. Actually, Bro. yeah. Bro, I was going to actually, Bob just saying laugh or die, rated H. It's a new film. Very good. All right. But have you have you heard? You know, you obviously know Faith No More's catalog, right? Dude, like it would be fucking. I want to take Epic or Midlife Crisis or or just get him on a tune. So, I mean, but Prince you've heard, have you heard live, have Prince you heard the saying Sugar, fucking Tej is saying where'd you get some sheen? I was gonna say, you know, I would love to take Slayer you know seasons in the abyss chorus and then like bang that out on a fucking tune illa man saying rage yeah i'm also like slayer or you know someone proper hype. actually you know what i want to take and like yo hear it now fatty and and, and dave if you're here i want to take sizzler solid as a rock chorus Bang that out. They do the verses. Sunning as I roll, they just can't stop with. You know what I mean? Like that, that I want to remix. Not the one like, that's what this is. Sunning as a rock. That one, not that one. That's a big tune too, bro. bro. That would be a a way better remix, man. Because you know what? The the reason why Mike. That's what I want to remix, actually. The proper one. But that Mike Patton, um, on. Have you heard the live album from. Brixton Academy, Faith No More. I remember seeing it. There was like 1987 or something, right? Way earlier. 92. No, no, no. 87. Yes, I said 87. Oh, like earlier, 92. Basket, where's your maths? Okay, wait. Very good. I know. I'm sorry. Dude. The whiskey's kicking in. Uh, so you fat yeah, bastard. the wine's kicking in, bro. Uh, they're very good. Bastard. You fat bastard, Faith No More. Um, the re- I'll, there's a reason why I mentioned this. is because this was the first time um, that... When this album came out was 1990 when the album came out, actually. Which? And there's, Epic. With the uh, one with Epic. No, no. Faith, yeah, but Faith, Epic Live, right? So mm, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. At the end because... of their, uh, their version of Epic Live, he busts out into... Um, fuck it, I'll play it to you. I'll play it to you, because we can do that. Epic Live. So this is, one of the, this is one of the reasons why I got into DJing, was like actually being able to kind of go into different things, yeah? Original uh, mashup. The original mashup. Can you hear that? Yeah, yeah, of course That's I can hear that. that. So then check this out. The whole track goes on. And then at the end, this happens. Okay. Guitar solo, fucking amazing. And then... You love guitar solo. Check out this out. Okay, I can't really hear, but I feel like I recognize it. Dude, it's, it's pump up the jam. Oh, you know who did something really sick? Like, you know who did something really like that? You know who did something really sick, you know like, really sick like that? When I saw Death Dones at Bricks and Academy a few years ago, yeah. they did a whole like dubbed out section, like one of their tunes, and they did sexy back, but like full dub delays on vocals. But the band has essentially started playing Doom because it was so slow and so heavy. Mm. And he's going sexy, blah, blah, blah. Boom, boom. Yeah, full fucking Justin Timberlake. It was incredible. Sick. So, yeah, that'd be kind of fucking cool. So, what would you want to do? Like, I mean, you, you must have done that live. Have you done that in any of your shows and taken sort of 
other things and put them in the mix already. Oh man, you know what? I really want to fucking <clears throat> take it there with him. Like the guys are gonna be like, I'm a massive fucking Mariah Carey fan. I'm a massive Katy Perry fan. I'm a massive fucking Whitney Houston fan. So if I could take it there, I would take it there with like, yo, imagine like my love is your love with some nasty. That would be people. that'd be fucking sick. That'd be fucking. Sick. Oh, dude, do you remember when I played Pony going into um, uh, at the at the Beggars show, the the last but one Beggars show. Cara from the label, yeah, Cara Larice, come on, Cara, topping. Anyway, sorry. What was the what tune? Did you do? What was the, Do you remember before you guys came on? You asked me to download a tune. Uh, or get hold of it and play it before you came on. Was oh, that was, our, was that was it? No, no, no. Oh, that's uh, Khan Khan Abattoir. Yeah, and then I mixed and I mixed um, Pony by Genuine. Into that was it. very big. That was a big. That was a big move. That was a big move. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, you know, some of these UK dubstep dudes, man. Like you're N Type. I need to just shout out N Type a hundred times. It's it's funny. I remember the first time I saw N Type. I think it was like at the end. It was like a Chase and Status or Andy C. Chase and Status, Andy C were both playing. And I walked in and there were the room on the right, you know, room two. Yeah. And was that the album? Was, was that Chase and Status' album launch? Are you talking about back then? Or like a proper gig? Was it no, private? no, way, way before like that one that really shot them into the stratosphere. Yeah, that was the, f the first Chase and Status album launch was at the end. And yeah. it was that tiny room two, and Shy was playing. Andy was there. It just had a kid up. Yeah, Shy and Shy was also playing room two. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he was playing a reggae but N type for me, the highlight of that night was N type because that was my first time, and I was like, I just sort of dude. It was like fucking like the pipes on the ceiling, the walls were rattling. He's just hitting the ceiling and just playing tunes. Like it, it will, it will never leave me. It will never leave me. And that's why I hear like that. Still, that UK fucking dubstep shit. It's like, okay, come on, that's, that's cool, man. Very real. How do you fucking balance being in a band and managing so many fucking artists? Trying. <laughs> Actually, you know, you know what, mate? Look, I work with Matt. Matt is incredible. Yeah. Also, Eliana, this girl, Eliana. Has joined our team. Big up Matt, by the way. Yeah, absolutely. So big up Matt, and also want to big up Eliana as well. Matt, Matt makes my life a lot easier. He is <clears throat> amazing at carrying weight, but also Eliana, who's joined our team. So she is, she's in Paris right now. She's stuck there because of lockdown stuff. <clears throat> but she's part of the Forever D and B collective. You know, she took a night that was tiny. You know, that was struggling in a scene that was struggling from maybe 100 people to selling out 800 capacity venues herself. Sick. She's young. She's, she's in her early to mid 20s and was already doing this whilst getting a degree from Parsons, whilst having a full visual Bro, that career. energy, that energy, we don't have it anymore, man. And it's fucking wicked. It's coming from other places and other female places. You know what I mean? It's fucking yeah, sick. Yeah, Eliana is fucking a, sick. I mean, just irreplaceable, incredible human being. Big up Aftab fam in the house, man. Wicked. Aftab, man, who worked with us so much. Aftab actually smashed so much stuff out for us. Like, saved us, you know, Gangster. jumped in at the right time. Um, but yeah, you know, yeah, having Eliana on board is, is, is absolutely incredible. Her ability to carry weight, just to do things. Um, she's so entrepreneurial. She's so... I mean, she just, she wants to achieve and she does achieve. People mm. like her. She's clever. She has incredible taste. She has incredible knowledge. I mean, to take, I mean, imagine how it must be hard in Paris to take, you know, drum and bass was struggling in Paris. And then, you know, and then she started booking our acts. I remember because she came to Outlook, she came to our boat parties and that's where I met her. And there was a point where Paris, the shows weren't big and, you know, she fucking made him big. Right. She's still young. She just fucking grafted it and did it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She didn't give a shit. She doesn't give a shit. She works hard. Yeah. She knows what I she mean, needs to do and she moves confidently. You know, back when I was, I was in a, you know, obviously, you know, I was in that sort of post Asian underground band like Charged, which was a big sort of punk band, mm -hmm. signed to Nation. And France had, you know, France was a big target market because Asian Dub Foundation got signed to Virgin France with their big sort of break. So they had London Records over here. And then ADF really made it big in France. You know what I mean? It was like a whole, movement over there so they seem more receptive um and then eastern europe like had just started opening up so i think we played exit 2002 on the main stage well like, done 
back then. And Jesus. That's, yeah, that was that was mind blowing for a fucking kid back when I was back then. But my point was was that France had this massive peak of underground shit that was popping off that happened to be tied with people of colour. Do you know what I mean? So like La N around that whole time, do you know what I mean? There's this whole idea of assertion of people of different skin colour and their underground Integration. music. Well, I, I don't know. I think it was I think it was more it was more inspired by public enemy, I guess. Do you know what I mean? And then like sort of a modern day public enemy. I imagine. So it's 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 heartening for me to hear that re-emerging with something like D and B. Do you know what I mean? I'm just that's what I'm saying. Because it kind of had this whole peak and then went down. And this is in two thousand and one, thousand and two. So yeah. for me to hear that again is wicked. It is nice. It's nice to hear that you know things are changing and that things can change for the better. Yeah, man. It's about and that it's she about... fucking built it herself. That's sick. Dude, I mean like what she got on, I mean it wasn't her brand, I don't think I mean, like forgive me if I get some of the facts wrong. Yeah. It wasn't her band but i think she came and injected a lot of life into it also i i just don't doubt you know i think a lot of people probably haven't heard a thank for a lot of things i think she's helped a lot of artists that we work with she's been really instrumental in in 1985 you know 1985 music and just handling things and handling artists and helping people mm. which is um yeah and she doesn't get tired <laughs> Need that energy, bro. Dude, that energy. That energy. Energy's hard to keep up. You know, making myself sound old. Bro, we are old. In fact, you're fucking probably a decade younger than me, though. Are you 48? Okay, so five years younger. <laughs> five years younger. Five years. There you go. <laughs> be a lot of pleasure. Bro, <laughs> are you 50, cuz? Are you Man. 50? That, dude, you know what? I'm 42 on Monday. Can you believe that shit? 42 on Monday. Bro, yeah, you, look, you don't have any fucking greys, are you? I'm grey as fuck. What are you talking about? And I'm balding like a bastard. Yeah. All this shit takes work. You know what I'm saying? Man, what, I feel like I have up? so many questions to ask you. I know we've been on here for an hour, so people are probably getting bored of us. But no, you can ask you me know. anything you want. This is our chat, bro. Fuck that. Everyone's enjoying. Like, you know, everyone's enjoying. It's fine. You know, also have a lot, I have a this lot feels like we're in a fucking bar with all of our mates, quite frankly. And that's what it's meant Yeah, to I be. know. The, the, the wine's kicked in, for sure. But, like, I definitely have a lot to thank you for. Are they fuck off? I don't want no fucking... No, no, no actually, no. Like, going back to our, our early conversation we were having about Monica and Randolph, when we came off stage, packed shit, I'm hurting fucking cats as well. And we get it together. You're like, proud, meet Monica and Randolph. They're here. This is yeah. Fuck. They're here from Bombay. Started touring. Like, the amount of things that came off the back of that, one introduction for me were absolutely insane. I have Monica and Randolph to thank for a lot of things. Um, Randolph and Monica have taken me to so many countries. Randolph has taught me so much about drumming. He kicked my fucking ass. Was, wait, wait, it cut off for me. You said Randolph has taught me so, so many things about drums. Dr and then it drumming. went drum, and then drumming. Dr okay, oh drumming. God. I was just like, what, the <laughs> fuck? what a really terrible syllable to end with. Dr and I was like, okay, what? what? Okay, it's fine. Drumming. Long. Okay, fine. Randolph kicked my ass as a drummer. Um, mm. And he, yeah, he just fucking, he was like, no, nah, step up. Do I it. Think speak, do speaking it, speaking it, of Bombay, it, right? No, uh, like, Dej is saying we're still struggling in Bombay. Um, Stretch is saying, how good's your memory? My memory's shit in the short term. Really oddly accurate in the long term. Um, and then Michelle says, one day we'll be in bars together. We shall, Michelle. Yes. We will. But we yeah, will. what were you saying, bruv? You, you were saying... Well, no, it's just like, it's actually, have, because you introduced me to those guys, I've said, guys have been to a lot of places. I even lived with Brandoff in Bombay for a while. You know what I mean? I was just couch surfing for a bit. And um, he's helped me a lot. Yeah. You so know, you mentioned Randolph, my lips went dry, I need to moisten up a bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Randolph is one of the most dangerous musicians I've ever met in my life. And I think mm, I will. And people generally, which is quite lovely to sort of roll with. Yeah. Yeah. And he's, you know, still looks younger than both of us, so. It's fucking true. How <laughs> annoying is that? The bastard. He's fucking older than me. You motherfuckers dyed his hair blonde and he's all got six pack and big chest and all. Yeah, I know, I know. Bitch? Is that what the fuck? Go, is that going six pack, mate? I mean, like, I'm not okay. Look, I'll be frank with you, right? I'm, I'm very, bl I'm blessed with a high metabolism, right? 
and I, I I eat like a horse, and I'm still relatively skinny, and I'm all right, man. I'm you know I'm, I'm fairly decently put together, and I've got a little bit of a tire happening. Do you know what I mean? Round round the bottom end, and Randolph's there like, fuck that, look at my six pack, and I'm like fuck, bastard. I just don't understand. And in fact, you know what? You know what? I'm going to say this publicly, right? Yeah, you know, Pavan's right. He's a vampire. He's immortal. That's true. Randolph is. But you know yeah. what? I asked, I asked Randolph. I was like, what are you doing? He's like, it's very simple, man. I just stand up and lie down a hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> I lie on the floor and then I get up and then I lie on the floor a hundred times. And that's it. Like, for fuck's sake. Yeah. All right, man. Oh. Uh... Hey, you had questions for me. Well, I th no, I don't know. Suddenly, uh, like, um, what are the questions I have for you? No, I wanted to know. I, what I really wanted to do is big you up, because I don't fuck off. No, no, no. You gave me you you, you gave me an opportunity and unknowingly. So I said, like, like hear these people do it. But like, how far that one encounter has gone in my life and still continues um, is amazing. So actually, what I actually what I really want, I want to try to ask you questions. I want to say thanks. Because really fuck crazy. me, because no, it brought me in, brought me in because you're like, cool, Prav can play drums. And look, they watch the show, Randolph and Monica, they're like, yo, he's sick. So they took me on, end up playing loads of countries. And then actually when I moved to India for a while, it mm. was, was really, really cool because by that point I was already in, you know, um, because it was part of that. And mm. that kind of led on to having so many incredible experiences. Nick Hawks is in the house. Nick, we just bigged you up for a huge chunk Nick of the whole Hawks. Oh Big my up. gosh! Hello, should, I be, should I be nervous? Ah! <laughs> no, I mean Nick's Nick's come in like half a bottle of wine and half a bottle of whiskey down, so it's fine. Ah, uh, I I highly doubt that. No, as in that like, you're the half bottle of wine, I'm the half bottle of whiskey. Is my point? Okay. Yeah, so it's fine. Ah, uh, well, Nick, we were talking. We were talking about um, how grateful we were that you gave us the opportunity. So. Yeah. Yes, sir. I mean, look at you climbing up. That's so sweet. This yeah, fully. Really, I'm thinking. I'm like, you are too. You are too. I'm like, fuck. Do I need to send Nick a contract? Or something? <laughs> <laughs> this is why. Okay, that's it. That's the answer to how you stay a musician and a manager. Is that as soon as you get prank, you should be called prank shoey for fuck's sake. <laughs> fucking prank shoey. Prank shoey is your name. Just oh, like, what fucking, oh, shit! I've got to do this. I've got to send a contract quick. I did. Oh. Yeah, dude. Also, look, man. I work with the uppies. We're like, we work with fucking New Zealand. So, like, so much of my life when it comes into winter, it's crazy, because New Zealand at this time is you know, 13, 13 hours ahead, right? So yeah. what? Yeah, yeah. It's what seven here, so it's eight o'clock in the morning there. So yeah. and we're working with LA all the time. Mm. So what? So they've just tapped in. So it's like, oh. There'll be some fucking 24 hours a fucking day email yeah. robot. And you, you know what? That's the thing is that also you live like, and I'm sure you're aware of this, but I used to bitch and moan about tour life and being awake at all hours and like, oh, fuck, I'm on a flight and no sleep and next gig and, and then this. And then as soon as you have to turn on work mode at whatever time, because you're awake at 4 or 5 a.m. at some after party and then some email comes in from somewhere, you've got to deal with it. You know, even if it's regular UK, beg your pardon, regular UK office hours. And that's what you just fucking did. You just switched into sort of like, I've got an email to do. Like, yeah. Like, well, dude, it's what Nick, it Nick, the... Nick's laughing right now because he knows <laughs> what it is. He's just yeah, like, exactly. I can be like, hey, 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 yo, shut up. Hold on. I've got to deal with it. All right, of, cool. Of, what's happening? Of everyone in this chat, I think Nick knows more than anyone on this whole chat. I think Nick, I think Nick never sleeps. I think Nick actually. Can I do a, can I do a voiceover for Nick Hawks? Yeah, I think so. I think I'm Nick Hawks. And I'm fucking watching you. <laughs> and I will make sure that everything is okay. And you will deliver on time. Thanks to my help. Yes. Yeah. 100%. Big up Nick no, Hawks, man. Respect Nick Hawks, man. 100%, man. Like, I, I, that's the thing. You know what? When you realize that a lot of musical shit that you grew up with, or, or stuff that you admire, not even grew up with, stuff that you admire on the wrecks, is because of people behind the scenes. And Nick is one of those people. It's like, full respect, man. It's Nick just... Nick has helped me. And I fucking appreciate it. No, <laughs> he's like, like, look, he's here. But yo. Have you seen what he said? Nick, Nick just look, says, I am here, indeed was watching you, openly, literally. Giving that, getting yeah. that opportunity. I spoke, I'll speak to Nick about this personally. And I'll speak about it openly. Mm. I'm fucking stoked, man. I've got an opportunity. I'm stoked for it. Nice. So, nice. Actually, have you read Richard Russell's book? Who? 
Richard Russell, who runs Excel. I thought you said, I thought you I said something else. No. You're clearly lads, aren't you? Huh? <laughs> You're clearly a bit pissed, aren't you? Well, the wine's kicked in, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, the guy that, like, okay, Richard Russell runs Excel Records, right? Mm -hmm. And I think Nick was there before Richard Russell joined. And it's mm -hmm. the whole story about the development of the prodigy till now, right? Mm -hmm. that, that whole thing, Rex, I'll go from a rave label influenced by rap to, to today. And Nick's obviously mentioned, you know, liberally throughout the book. And, and I think that the thing that I really appreciate is that through all the fun and enjoyment and stuff, Nick's always had this, this present. Fuck, I should do one of these with Nick. Nick, I'm going to actually bug you about this. That'd be awesome. Yeah. yeah, Nick, I'd love to fucking do one of these with you um, because it'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah. But respect, sir. <laughs> and also, Prav, I mean, like, you're so sweet. You just, like, you're so, you give everyone so much love and respect, regardless of having done such major big shit. Like, I, I know some stuff that you've done that people will be shocked at, like, in terms of the scale and the presence and, like, you know, the people you've worked with and stuff you've done. And you're still so fucking humble. Man, I think you just got to still keep grinding. I appreciate it, but you got to grind now. Like, it's not over. You know what mm. I mean? Like, what's next? And I think that's the whole, the whole thing. But out of everyone I know, you could so easily be a prick. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know what? You know what? Like, while we're here, I'm doing something really cool with my wife. Um, we're uh -huh. going to start talking about it tomorrow. Okay. So... I'm um, not going to say too much. Excellent. This is the is... air of mystery you're putting out there. No, it's just great. I think we're, we're, we're both doing something we're really proud of. And it's just kind of being part of something greater and more. Well, it's amazing and it's powerful. And it's Are you forming your own cult? No. Because I not could yet. see that working, actually. That's, I'm just, my Gujarati head's like, ha, huh, we could apply this, this, <laughs> this model. And yeah. Yeah. No, no this, we're, do, we're trying to do some stuff that's cool. We're working with kids. Mm. Um, without saying too much, um, in, in a broader way, in whatever way we can going forward, we're looking at inclusion and diversity and... Representation. Those, yeah, and all those kind of things. So we're going to be making some, you know, in, in any kind of field, um, just across the board, we're just kind of looking at trying to find solutions and empowering people. So nice. Uh, we'll be talking ab about that a little bit. Very good. Very yeah. good. I'm awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not, not awesome. That's what I said. I said that is awesome, not I am. I awesome. think you said I'm awesome. I, I did say that because like, the whiskey's kicked in. I'm just like here, here. No, I meant that is awesome, not I am awesome. Yeah. Um, but listen, bro. On on a real one, I was trying to rack my brains. Like, how the fuck did we first meet? Or when do we first meet? Drew Pubman. I can't tell you exactly when. Obviously, but through Bubba. <laughs> Obviously, through Bubba. Do you remember the first time? Because I really don't. Yeah, do I? It was just like you were there in my life, and it was like, that's proud. Yeah. That's quite sweet. You just materialised. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? It's, it's the thing is, we've, we, we, we had an agreement, and like I have these agreements with all my friends that we do these chat, chats with to sort of not get to certain areas and I feel that that's coming on because every time I think so I think, we hang I think out, maybe it's, it's like there and like I'm, I'm there. kind of biting my tongue about various things I want to say that I don't want to say if should we call it a wrap should I think we should wrap it yeah I think we, we, we're sort of both teetering on the precipice oh. <laughs> <laughs> perfect timing <laughs> perfect timing bro thank you very much man I appreciate this I love this you lovely. yo thanks for the opportunity we, these weekly chats keep me happy and drunk and um, and grounded. So thank you. For... I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go cook dinner for my wife now. I'm actually gonna go make some gobi bhaji. So yo. nice. I'm gonna go and we. And that's that's my yeah. Th my the scale of how much I can plan ahead right this second. So yeah, cool. All right. All right. Well, big love. Respect, Ramesh. Ramesh is in the building. Ramesh, we're tapping out. Easy. Big up, Ramesh. Oh uh, my I'm... gosh, yo, Ramesh, yo. Thanks for supporting Pen Street too. On that note, I'm going to go and we over there before I we over here, which is going to be very messy. Okay, bye. Love you guys. Peace. Easy. Bye. Thanks, bruv.